Over the course of decades, Porsche has evolved 911 variants to suit just about every driver and driving style. From high-speed grand touring to flat-out track weapons, there's a 911 that offers something for just about everyone. It takes just a glance at this new 911 GT3 RS, however, to know exactly where the car is meant to be, the racetrack. But can the laser-focused 911 adapt to a passionate guy like me without a racing license? Let's go see. I'm Seth Mirsma, Editor-in-Chief of MotorOne.com, and I'm here in Thermal, California to answer exactly that question. Now, while I go get suited up, why don't you subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel? You can also find us on all your favorite social media apps using the handle MotorOneCom. All right, so in order to get the best out of the car on the track, I first gotta get familiar with the great number of variable settings that can be changed for the suspension, drive mode, traction control, and the differential. The cool thing is, just like in a race car, almost all of these can be adjusted with these knobs right here on the steering wheel. So starting with drive modes, I can adjust between normal, sport, and track, but track is really where the magic happens and where I can make a lot of minute individual adjustments. So each one of these four knobs does have a specific purpose. We've got one for the drive mode, one for traction control, one to control the differential, and one to control the front and rear damper settings. So once you've activated any one of these systems, Porsche has mapped the function of the knobs to a display in front of you. That's fantastic because it means you can make adjustments on the fly while you're driving and keep your eyes up and not looking down at the steering wheel. Being able to change the damper settings front and rear, hard and soft, on the move is really incredible. That's something that typically you would have to pit to do. Uh, it was very analog in the past, and now you can do it while you're driving the car. Meanwhile, the two bottom knobs allow you to adjust the differential, which you can open and close to your liking, or the traction control, which you can change to intervene sooner or later. The impressive aerodynamics of the car are all active too, and you do have some control. You can force it to be in low or high downforce mode here on the screen. You don't need to do that on the racetrack because it's adjusting itself. It's infinitely variable and it's giving you the best possible position at all times. All of these systems are incredibly impressive and they let you make the car what you want it to be, but the proof is out there on the track. So are they gonna help me drive faster? Let's go see. Porsche's now familiar four liter flat six engine has been tuned to make 518 horsepower and 343 pound feet of torque in the GT3 RS, helping it sprint to 60 in just three seconds and hit a top speed of 184 miles per hour. To keep that power plant cool and hit all of the impressive aerodynamic targets, one massive centrally mounted radiator takes the place of the three rad setup used in the GT3. But like most race cars, it's the aero package that makes it truly interesting. Aerodynamic aids are just about everywhere you look, from the aggressive radiator outlets on the nose of the car to the vented front fenders, and spectacularly capped off by the towering carbon fiber wing at the rear. The wing is a masterpiece. It's taller than the roof of the car, strong enough to stand up to the nearly 1,900 pounds of total downforce, and lovely enough to sit on your mantle if your ceilings are high enough. Before I even turn the ignition for the first run of the day, I'm reminded of how great 911s are for tall folks like me. Even at six foot five and wearing a helmet, I fit neatly into the rigid but comfortable bucket seats with a clear forward view and no scraping of my dome on the headliner. Perfect. Porsche only has two cars to split between six journalists, so I'll get three 15 minute lapping runs around a roughly three mile configuration of Thermal's club track. That's not a lot of time to dive into these very deep tuning options, but luckily I've got GT3 RS development driver, Jorg Bergmeister and longtime Porsche factory driver, Patrick Long to help me get up to speed quickly. For the first stint, I need to do my best to simply understand the layout of the track, but also set a baseline for what the car is like in its default track settings. I leave everything set to zero. With traction control on and Porsche's excellent seven speed PDK transmission in full auto mode. After just one warm up lap, Long ups the pace in front of me and I'm compelled to do my best to follow. Of course the exhaust note from the four liter is glorious, but it soon fades into the distance as my brain scrambles to keep up with the pace at which the corners are coming at me. In this setup, the car feels incredibly stable, stiff, and essentially safe, no matter how I muck up a corner entry or exit. The optional carbon fiber brakes are immensely powerful with a super initial bite, and even at this feeling out speed, I get a sense of tremendous grip levels offered by the Michelin Pilot's 
Sport Cup 2 tires, pressed into the tarmac by all that downforce. Meanwhile, even when I get over eager on the throttle while coming out of a tight left hand corner, the car gives me just the smallest wiggle before traction control subtly cuts power and the car straightens out. Still one is over before I know it, and I'm perfectly primed for my second run in what I'll call Yorg mode. Spoiler alert, I love Yorg mode. I move into the GT3 RS with the standard steel brakes, following Herr Bergmeister. Before we head out, I ask Jorg to show me the setup he likes the most for this particular configuration of the track. The big change here is the damper settings. So the front is softer on compression and both front and rear are stiffer on rebound. While I expect a change in driving experience, I did not expect the 911 to be almost completely transformed on my first lap. Boy, was I wrong. The car feels less restricted, much easier to rotate around the apex of a turn, and far more fluid in transitioning between corners in a complex. Set up like this, it's easier for me to move the car around by way of the laser precise steering. With a newfound handling profile and my confidence in the car and the track growing, I'm also able to really push hard in long corners to feel the effects of that big rear wing. I know there's more nuance to it, but essentially the harder I push, the faster I go, the more the car seems perfectly stuck to the face of the earth. It's like magic. Porsche smartly picked a track layout that offered a long left-hand sweeping turn that really allows me to move rapidly with a consistent steering input and feel the car just suck to the ground. A quick note on those steel brakes, don't get them. The steel discs have tons of stopping power, of course, but they're harder to modulate than the ceramic discs with a softer bite and obviously less resistance to fade. Yes, the carbon ceramics cost about nine grand more, but that's effectively rounding error in a car that starts at $223,800. I end the day back in the car I started in with Yorg mode activated and this time traction control off and shifting for myself. After the first lap, I give up on the paddles completely. The response from the PDK transmission is incredibly quick and the paddles themselves are easy to grab and lovely to use, but the automatic shifts are just far faster and better judged than my own. I can't do better than the computer. Deactivating traction control makes the car way, way looser on exits. And in many cases, I can feel that I'm meaningfully faster too. That is, when I get the corner right. A few times I still get greedy trying to catch the racing driver in front of me and I have to back off so I don't spin. The GT3 is a wonderfully balanced driving machine, but the fewer electric aids you have switched on, the more dangerous it becomes if you're not absolutely locked into the task at hand. For those prepared to handle the GT3 RS on the track, the car's incredible degree of customization and the ability to tailor your drive, even while out on the road, is huge. So I've just finished up my day of driving here at Thermal, and I've gotta say that the 911 GT3 RS absolutely lives up to its potential. If you are somebody who is a weekend racer or a club racer, you're gonna love the way that you can adjust the setup on the fly and make the car exactly what you want it to be. It's quick, it's fluid, it's aggressive, and it's got a bigger wing than the last one. What more could you want? <laughs>